if you will look at the second page on that item, it says increase expenditure code. That should be transfer expenditure code instead of the increase. When did you remove the five column? <laughs> um, a month ago. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't your idea, but I did ask you about it. Let's see. Uh, so that's the only change that I would recommend before you adopt the minutes, and that's to change the word increase to transfer. I, I don't think you do as long as you're aware of when you vote on it that they'll be corrected to read that. Bridge General Projects. F1. F1F. 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 F1F on the second page, that 39,519.29 should be transfer expenditure code instead of the increase because okay. it's kind of double dipped there. Okay. Okay. Change that wording right there. Okay. Just trying to help you out there a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Move to approve if that's I have the. A motion to approve. I have a second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll ask for a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, next is increase and in transfers. Next we have the finance portion of the agenda. If approve these items, we'll go on to the commission for approval. F1A, general purpose school fund, uh, Department of Labor and Workforce Development, adult education grant. Uh, Troy's not here. Is that and he, I talked to him today and he was supposed to be here. I mean, this, this is just to recognize that we're getting a grant um, and this is how they would set up the budget to spend those grant proceeds. Motion to approve. Motion to, okay, to have a second. Second. We have a motion, any discussion? Ask for a roll call vote, please. Lael? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Motion passed. F1B, general purpose school fund. This is to establish a budget for the arts student ticket subsidy state grant for $6,432. Once again, this is a Troy's item. Is this just a... This is another, another grant. Okay. And this is to recognize receipt of that money. Have a, any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Samples? Yes. Motion passed. F1C, highway roads and bridges, uh, $26,000 for parts. I, I was contacted actually real early this morning by email, but I didn't even get to turn my computer on until about a half an hour ago or about an hour ago, and I was asked if I could handle this because Bill had a conflict that came up and he would not be able to be here tonight. All they're asking is that we transfer money from liquid asphalt so that they can afford to buy some parts for their equipment for the balance of this fiscal year. So, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Motion passed. F1D, the endowment for the children's home, 12,000. Randy, I think you're going to present this. Yes. Uh, this is to rectify and correct our revenue and expenditure statements, uh, and it pertains to the children's home, and we're now budgeting for this endowment in Fund 191 rather than in Fund 308. So we already have it set up in 191. We need to now take it out of fund 308. <coughs> have a motion to second. have a second. Any discussion? Let's get now. Discussion. Ask it now, Steve. Yeah, we, what, what, where are we on this children's home? I thought we were getting out of that. Yeah. Yeah, but your, your action, the commission's action was after, 
this actually pertains to the endowment itself that the children's home benefits from. This is this is this is, this is the interest. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is the interest that's on. That's why I put children's home on there so you would know what the endowment was. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we went that's, through this a few years ago. We can't yeah. do anything about it. No, we right. can't get rid of it or can't. Let's have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Mitchell? Yes. Samples? Yes. Motion passed. General County Accounting, align the codes with the County Uniform Chart of Accounts, 3200, Randy? I would ask that this be removed from the agenda. Dana did some research this afternoon. We actually handled this as a part of a larger transfer in August. Okay. So I'd ask that it be pulled. Okay, do I need, need a motion for need, need to pull? Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Samples? Yes. F1F, General Liability Accounting, correcting the fiscal year 2013 budget, 179,683. Randy? Okay. Every item from this point on are items that have, that are not required to be brought to the budget committee, nor are they required to be presented to commission. Uh, back as far as when the mayor interviewed me back in last spring, he asked me my thought about full disclosure. I said, I'm all for it. As part of that, we were asked, and there have been a series of things we have brought to you over the last six months where the comptroller's office has said, you cannot mix your accounting in the same fund for insured products and self-insured products. So in Fund 263, last year, we accounted for workers' compensation, general liability, and employee health insurance in that same fund. We could track each of those components separately, but the comptroller's office says those that need to be in individual funds. So that's what we've been doing. So the current fiscal year, fiscal 13, is when they're required to be accounted for in separate funds. What I'm bringing to you is those things that you typically wouldn't see because you approve the rates, you don't approve the transactions themselves, and we're showing you and disclosing to you what's going on in each of those funds. Okay. Now, that's a, that's a simple explanation to something that's a little more complicated, but I want to make sure that you're aware of what's going on. So in this instance, on F1F, and we're, and we're not really we're not really making cash transactions. Well, that was going to be my question. The, these are really kind of setting budgets up, if you will. Does the motion just need to be to accept these items? Whatever you feel comfortable doing. You can tell me you don't ever want to see this stuff in the future, but I felt like you need to be aware as we're being asked. To, to divide these things up, I want you to see where they're landing in those individual funds so that when you pull up the financial records, you'll be able to understand a little bit better about what's going on. Well, I would move F1, F3, O, that uh, we accept these and that we make them part of the budget. They, they are, in essence, reclassifications. And then if anybody has a question on any particular one, we can bring it up after the motion. Okay. Okay. I'll second his motion. Any discussion? Okay, ask for a roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Melton? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Samples? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Is that, is, is that going to include all of them or do we need to go through each one of them? The motion, the motion was through, was through o. o. Okay, through O. All right. And, and obviously they're different. You can read individually what those individual transactions do, but the general theme is they were reclassifying the intent of what the comptroller's office wanted us to do. And it is not required to come to you, but we felt it ought to come to you at least initially so that you can understand what's going on. If you had any questions, we'll be happy to address them. I, I feel that uh, the commitment that that this county and the commission has made towards transparency that this is items that need like 
you said they need to be they need to be there where they can be reviewed. I agree. Okay. Uh, Mayor, let me make one point uh, on F1I. There is an explanation. There is one sentence on there that needs to be. Is it I? Is that the right one, Dana? Mm -hmm. J. Doesn't change the transaction, but there is one one line in the explanation that needs to be stricken. It is not correct. Item G and H. The last sentence, the reason this occurs now is due to our waiting until the audit is completed. That line, with that explanation was replicated on a number of these act, these account, these transactions, and on G and H, that line needs to be stricken. So I want to disclose that to you so that when these get produced to go to county commission, uh, we can strike that line. Just an editorial change, so that's no problem. Let's make sure those get changed. All right. That's all I have on those items. Anybody have any other questions on that? <clears throat> Adam G. Uh, discussion budget meeting schedule and budget guide for fiscal year 13 14 we have um, coordinated with Rhonda all of the times and eliminated the conflicts for maybe government day and one other item that commissioners go to so this reflects the list of public notices that will be printed in the newspaper and includes the workshops that we plan for the for the budget process <coughs> it does not include additional workshops like we had last year and we can set those later and we'll run separate ads for those as you get into the budget process so you've got a budget calendar for the year for all of our meeting times and they'll be at five o'clock and then it has on there the purpose of the meeting. And then you have a separate meeting that's just extracted off that master calendar that identifies all the budget dates. And then when we have our first meeting, we will present to you in order that you want to consider them all the different departments once we get that information in. The only other thing I would say is um, that's worth noting, I've talked to uh, Commissioner Farmer, we are proposing the same rate structures on all of our benefits, but because this committee meeting occurs before the HR committee meeting on the 15th, I have noted on here that these rates are subject to change by the committee, but I'm not aware of any reason that they'll be any different from this. And then this time next year, we will, you will get it like in December instead of January. The one change that I'm aware of, the dental insurance drops, I think, $2 and some change a month. And that's the one change that I know will be before them for their consideration. And I think by law, you all have to adopt the calendar. The only other thing I would add is last year you had a fairly detailed uh, synopsis of the budget and all the funds. I think there are two thing, three things really that you all are aware of that I'll just mention them, but there's no point in me going to a bunch of trouble to write out a bunch of stuff. One, we all know that sales tax has been flat to decline in every month. And obviously, as far as we're concerned, that's going to impact the school budget and it's going to impact the highway department. Those are the only two uh, beneficiaries of sales tax revenue. Secondly, the issue we've had about the penny on the tax rate and the value of that. It is not what we budgeted. The budget was predicated on $310,000 uh, $310, per penny. It's around 305, a little shy of 305. So we've got that issue. And then the, um, the third issue is just the overall condition of the school's budget and we all know that's predicated on use of one-time <coughs> non-recurring money. 
and that was fund balance last year. So those are kind of the three issues that are facing us. And I'm sorry, but I didn't feel like there was a need for me to put that in writing. It's been pretty common knowledge when I've talked with any of you all are very well aware of the issues. Many of you have asked, Randy, can we basically present a status quo budget? And that's our intent, basically, is to do that. Um, I've not seen anything, and, and just generically, I've not seen anything positive on the revenue side to say that we're going to have a lot of other resources to deal with, you know, other needs that there may be out there. And so that's my two cents worth right now. I thought the calendar was the most important thing for us to get adopted, and we'll, we'll move on from that. Do I need a motion on this to bring it for discussion? Talking about the calendar? Yes. I move to approve. Okay. A second. second. All right. Okay. Open the floor for discussion. Is there, is there going to be any issue? Um, Mr. Melton and I are stepping off the committee. Do you think we're stepping ahead to That's what I was set thinking. this for the other members coming on? or? It's pretty standard compared to what it, it is pretty done. standard. It's, it's compared pretty to historical, with the exception of a couple of changes that that Rhonda got right. gave to us that the commitments that, that the commission has prior to the budget. Well, and nothing that says we can't change it. If we exactly. Yeah, but the other part would be then uh, if there are some additional meetings, it doesn't preclude them not having those. That is correct. correct. Okay. That you members reserve that right, members of this committee reserve that right to set as many workshops as you feel is necessary. Okay, because sometimes that gets to be a, <clears throat> an issue. I mean, it, sometimes you just have to. So uh, that would be my only question. So instead of the penny, it's three, three, three five instead of three ten. It's three oh four <clears throat> something. Yeah. It's a little less than three hundred five thousand dollars per penny. Okay, I thought it lower than that. I've talked to Scott earlier. Few months ago, and he was even projecting less than that. Yeah, well, at one time it was at around 298,000 yeah, or something like that. Something like that yeah. Yeah. The, the issue, and, and let me tell you how I calculate what a penny's worth it's, it's what, what does a penny generate based on assessed value times your collection rate. For example, if we were to have a discussion and somebody said, we need to raise a million dollars, how many cents of a property tax increase would that require? Well, it's not 100% of your tax roll, it's the percentage of your tax roll that you're going to collect. So in our case, historically, it looks like we're around 95% is, about, is roughly what our collection rate is. <clears throat> And I think what's happened is we've been calculating it based on the 100% value and then figuring what attack, what, what type of resources you may need, and that's just not the right. You're not going to get that other 5% until on down the road. <clears throat> you well, have 10 turn, years. Turn, turn backs always covers when well, we've overestimated like that in the years I've said. And, and then the other thing I want to share with you that, that we'll put a little more emphasis on this year is it's important to know how you're going to finish the year because that's what you ought to be basing your budget on the next year. Otherwise, why are we going through the exercise of all these transfers and amendments? Right. You're correct. So I'm not saying that comparing a budget year to another budget year is not valuable. It is somewhat valuable, but the most important thing is how are you operating now and how are you proposing to operate next year and set the budget based on that? Well, I was looking through earlier. Most departments is running about 50% right now, aren't they? As far as what they're using, I mean, it's running yeah, there's six not months. Any. That's about right. Right. There's some of them in the 30s, but okay. Do we still have the uh, the vote on the, the schedule on the floor? Is there any more discussion on that? That's for a roll call vote. Lale? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Melton? Mitchell? Yes. Sample? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, finance report. Do anybody have any more discussion on the on the budget for Randy? 
H finance reports. This is information only. Uh, Randy, if you, is there anything On you want to say? Item three, I uh, sent to you by separate correspondence this item on grant procedures and grant worksheet. Uh, that's mainly for you to have roughly a month to look at it, give us your feedback and thoughts. My proposal is that we come back to you uh, next month and ask you to adopt this or some variation of this so that we can start standardizing all of our grant processes. Dana led the effort to draft yeah. it. We had separate meetings with every department, including those elected officials who are involved in the grant process. I think we got some really good feedback and input from them, and that's all been incorporated in the draft proposal that you've got in front of you. So the main thing is, if you don't like the idea of trying to standardize this, tell us and we'll drop it. But we just think it would be very helpful to us as we go through next year's audit. It standardizes it to where you've got some consistency in how it gets presented to you. The departments then, the advantage for them is to have some standardization in knowing how they should apply for the grants and how we receive them and how we manage them. And looking at it from a preliminary standpoint, it does look like a great beginning and again the standardization I think would help us quite a bit in facilitating the process and for the and also in the understanding of the process and understanding exactly where it's going because some of the biggest debates we've had on the grant process is different kinds of approaches and, and it's just led to a lot of confusion so from that standpoint I applaud your all's efforts in that and you know and I know I mentioned it to Randy earlier and he gave credit to his staff and and I would like to echo that. Good job on, on that. Thank you. One, uh, one, one question. Sure. In the section of the draft under uh, instructions for grant worksheet before grant is applied for, that section, unless I missed it, is there a place in there where the prior prior knowledge or the application has to come before this committee. Maybe I just overlooked it, but I didn't find it yesterday. And I looked at it again, I don't expect to see it. <clears throat> Prior to application, it says before a grant is applied for, the following is required to be filled out, but then I don't see anything that that information should come to the budget committee. Well, I, we've got on here item three. After the worksheet has been reviewed, it will be forwarded to the budget committee for approval. Where, well, I miss, where is that? Number three. Um, item three. I thought I'd saw that on there. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong. It should be. It's the, on the first page there. Page right after the memo, Steve. Oh, okay. I was looking under the section on them. Yeah, I see that. The, okay. I was looking under the section on them. And the method to the and the method to the madness there is mm -hmm. there may be some grants that there's no match required. There may be some that it's it's uh, uh, in kind that's required, or you can use uh, salaries that you already ha incur as a match. All we're trying to do, again, to Holden's point, is standardize it so that when you get it, we can represent to you that there is no match or there is a match we you have full disclosure <laughs> is there any more discussion on this the grant procedures grant worksheet okay okay i'll ask now if there's any input on items not on the agenda saying is the, the penny will actually reflect the uncollected revenues, the 5% basically. The value of the penny will reflect a 95% collection rate. Yes. Okay. That, that's the only logical way for me. If you ask me the question, how much will we have to raise the property tax to generate X dollars? I can only tell you what we expect to collect 
and we don't expect to collect 100 percent of that tax rate in that year. Well, it, for budgeting purposes, it tells you. I mean, what it tells us is this is the dollars we actually have to spend, as opposed to 10 years down the road. Yeah, the five percent we're not going to get anyway. And you'll actually, we'll get some of that 5%, but it'll be over the balance of nine years. Well, but it's a 5% lag every year. Anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. How much of a historical basis was in determining 5%? I mean, did we just look at the last couple of years? Oh, no, 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 no. Scott's got it tracked by, by month, by year for the last probably 12 years, I guess. I so the that. average of 95. Right. I actually looked at how it's turned out over about the last five years. It's been it's been as low as 93 and some change in one year, but it's it's somewhere around high 94s to low 95s. There's a range. And it, it, that's not a, and to be honest with you, and I've talked to Troy about this, that's not a number we all miss. I mean, that disappoints me that we miss the budget what we think we're going to collect in property tax. Just, that all not be. And from their standpoint, they rely on it pretty hard to have to. And I agree. As do we. Well, Anything else? We've based everything, everything in the past been based on 100%, hasn't it? I'm sorry. Hasn't everything in the past been based on 100 That's what it looks like to me. Well, it's a mistake. For, for some reason, I had it's it in my mind that we were I figuring on the 95% collection. I don't think so, because it, 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 it always come to us that the penny, 100% of the penny is worth X but, number of dollars. Yeah. And, and that's but again, mistake. if you're it's looking sure. at, and I'm not casting any dispersions at anybody, but a property assessor in any county is going to look at the tax levy and say, what does that generate? But what the tax assessor's looking at, is, the property assessor's looking at, is the value. Mm -hmm. What the trustee and what <clears> we're <throat> looking at is what we're gonna collect. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I no matter what the been property assessor into gives us, it's well, an eight dollars a turn back is coming. We're only gonna collect nine five percent of that. That's, that's all we need to budget. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that's the way we're going to be presenting it to you. I sure would hate to think we were making that 5% up on the back of the people that are paying their taxes, though. I think you budget for the 95%. That's, yeah, you, don't, yeah. you don't look to, to try to raise the taxes because you have 5% not paying taxes. No, no, that's not. Yeah. It's just. No, it's a realistically again. budget. You can only do it on expected revenues, right. not the revenues you know you're not going to get anyway. Yeah. And the challenge is compounded, even if we didn't have an issue with the property tax. The issue that we have statewide with the sales tax is going to impact us because it is flat to declining in our county right now. And has been for what? Four months? Yeah, July was the last month that it was actually up over the previous. These next two months are going to be critical. Well, December should be up, probably. Well, I'm going to quit reading because, you know, depending on who you read and when you read it, you get completely. <laughs> you got a bunch of stocks that got downgraded, retail stocks got the downgraded internet, because the they didn't sales generate tax the top sales they thought they were going to generate. Yeah. The internet sales tax had a large so we, we need to look at what happened to your local sales tax on the internet purposes. Mm -hmm. So that's going to make it even lower. Are we through, Mr. Mayor? We're through on it. Motion to adjourn. So moved.